For the fastest, cheapest, and most reliable coins in the market with a no band guaranteed delivery, check out my coin sponsor, MOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Man Money Shot. Sniffing up the man cheese as always. Man 25's beta was out for a little over a week, and I got to play it for a good portion of that. So I wanted to make a video giving people that didn't get a chance to play it, or even people that did uh, get a chance to play it. I wanted to break down some of the new features that I think are really going to be the most overpowered and really dominate the game when Man 25 comes out at a full release to the masses. As there really are a lot of changes. I know people out there that didn't get to play the game think that the game is going to be the exact same game. I thought the same thing thinking it was going to basically be Madden 24.2 or 24.5, whatever. I thought it was going to really be an extension of Madden 24. Uh, and there are a lot of similarities. You can tell there's a lot of the same programming that was used in the game for Madden 25. But the game really feels different because of a lot of the new features I'm going to talk about in today's video. But before I do, if you guys want to see more videos like this leading up to Madden 25, please make sure to be a subscriber. Like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go and let's get right into the video. Now, there were a lot of changes on defense, but I really feel like the changes to the offense is going to make this a mostly overpowered offensive game. One of the biggest changes is offense in general. Uh, when it comes to passing, I made a video earlier where I thought that there was going to be um, Hot Route Master essentially for every uh, quarterback because in uh, College 25, it looks like every quarterback has three Hot Route menus. Um, and I thought that Madden was going to be the same based on the fact that quarterbacks in the NFL are obviously way further along than quarterbacks in college. So I thought that you would give them the full customization, but they didn't do that. It looks like they're going to keep uh, Hot Route Master in the game at least for one more year. They did change the Hot Route menu, though. They took away things like zig routes, which I think were very important when it comes to uh, beating man coverage. But they really added two adjustments that I think are going to completely break the game. They've given way too much customization when it comes to offensive play calling and hot routes. And those two are going to be corner routes on pretty much any receiver and post routes on pretty much any receiver. At least that's how the beta was. Now, corner routes on any receiver, I'm sorry, slants on any receiver isn't necessarily uh, something that's... Um, you know, new. That's something that's obviously one of the better adjustments you can make. You still have that, but to be able to put corner routes on every receiver is something that used to be in the game maybe like five or six years ago, and it was kind of overpowered to the point where they removed it from the from the, the hot route menu, which is why it's surprising to see that it's back. Uh, and when I say corner routes and slants, I mean that tight ends can now run corner routes and slants once again, which was once again a very popular thing back, you know, five or six years ago, whenever they had it in the game last, that was removed, I think, essentially to nerf it. So corner routes, slants, and post routes are probably the three most powerful routes in the game. And now you have access to all three of them on any given play to any position in the game, making it way easier to essentially, um, you know, create just overpowered plays with your custom route, with your custom hot routes. So basically, it's to the point where I feel like this, this particular game is just going to be uh, very easy to pass. Defense feels pretty good for the most part, um, but giving that type of flexibility on any given play really makes the formation, in my opinion, almost irrelevant because you can create one play touchdowns with those three routes alone against just about every single defense in the game. It's one thing to have post routes and corner routes. It's another thing to be able to control the depth of them because a lot of times these routes aren't really usable based on the fact that they're they're breaking too short or they're breaking too far. Or they're just not really working um, as far as where they're breaking to the point where they might run into a coverage. But now with the new custom stem feature was something that was uh, revealed in the College 25 um, gameplay breakdown or the gameplay trailer, whatever they call that, the deep dive. Now that you have that in Madden, you can really uh, just turn any post route, which like I said, once again, is going to be in your audibles or corner route into a one play touchdown style of play against a lot of different defenses. It really opens up the ability to uh, work the deeper zone coverages and really manipulate them how you want to, which like I said, if you watch channels like this, it's going to be super easy. I mean, I feel like I already broke the game and the game's not even out. So those two things alone make offense uh, really, uh, really overpowered. It, almost to the point where I question if EA knows what they're doing because this is too much customization. I don't think they're going to be able to keep up with what the uh, community and guys like myself are going to be able to do with these route customizations. It's really going to make offense overpowered. And one of the things that they also changed on offense is your ability 
to um, you know basically change the blocking structure on your offensive line in a way where you get to see what every individual player is going to be blocking. Your running back, your tight ends, all of them. You can change your blocking structure to the point where you can see specifically who they're going to block and it's accurate. So that makes it way easier to pick up blitzes. Once again, a huge key to offense. Um, somebody is spamming you with a blitz, they're not going to be able to continue spamming you with that blitz. You're going to need to be very versatile on defense. You're going to have to use multiple styles of defense and multiple styles of blitzes. One of the uh, ball carrier moves that I noticed that was really overpowered, they talk about juke moves and they talk about hezzy moves and stuff like that, but the spin move really feels like the best ball carrier move on offense as well. That's something where you don't really get a lot of movement when you do a spin move. You kind of just spin in place. But that's something that I find is going to be uh, probably the meta when it comes to uh, making people miss is going to be the spin move. If somebody's coming right at you, you can just spin and it kind of dumbs them out and gets you out of a jam, uh, which I think is going to be the go-to. So that's pretty much it for offense. Uh, but there's a couple on defense, starting with the switch stick, which I really didn't find a ton of use for. Uh, in the uh, the beta when I was playing it, um, I was still kind of finding myself just using a middle linebacker over the middle of the field or a safety over the middle of the field, uh, and I find that that was best. But I'm sure as time goes on, uh, you'll f I'll find better uses for the switch stick itself. I found it to be more of an issue than anything. As, as I was moving around uh, pre-snap, if somebody hiked the ball at the right time while I was trying to move somebody around, a lot of times I would accidentally switch to a different player. Uh, one time it was like a cornerback, and it cost me like a one-play touchdown because I didn't know where I was. But that was early on, so it's something I got kind of used to. But I still didn't find that I used that as much as I wanted to because I still kind of set up my defense in a way um, where I was really just... Um, using one guy and, and control trying to control the field that way but I'm sure over time it's going to be more useful to try to use that switch stick to try to jump routes on receivers that move to a certain area and stuff like that that's something that's going to take a little bit of getting used to but it didn't necessarily feel necessary I was still really uh, running my defense the same way as I used to and I was still controlling most of the field it really just came down to how I set up my defense um, other than that, I find that the dollar defense is going to probably be the meta defense once again, as it felt, um, you know, like the most uh, versatile. It felt like it had the most plays, which is no nothing new. Uh, but dollar defense definitely is going to be big. Cover two, uh, Tampa two, that is, uh, especially a matching cover two, felt like a much improved defense. I really didn't get a lot of time. I mean, cover zero just felt horrible as far as you're going to get roasted if you try to run cover zero. So I imagine cover two didn't really feel that good. Cover two man, that is, really didn't feel that good. But uh, zone coverages really felt like the way to go this year. And uh, cover two felt like a viable option. It felt like a pretty good defense uh, with mid reads doing a pretty good job of um you know basically getting where they need to be so <clears throat> that was kind of one of all of the issues was in the in the past when it came to cover two is mid reads didn't really cover the middle very well but in this year's game it feels pretty solid uh things like um you know in the past a lot of people really thought it was a good idea to use um you know zone drop depths on these uh on these type of things like these outside cornerbacks and stuff like that that's going to be very difficult now that you have the ability to custom stem uh, routes. So if you want to set your zone drops to a certain depth on defense, and you think it's gonna you know, kind of set things up, it's gonna it's not gonna work nearly as well this year, based off the fact that your opponent on offense can just custom stem it beyond that point. So if the maximum for uh, your zone drop depths is 30 yards. Uh, you can just custom stem around the 35, 40 yards. It doesn't really matter. So the, the old meta of 30 and 5 uh, for or 25 and 5, uh, that's going to be really easy to just custom stem your route to like 15 and 20 and just kind of split those. There's a, there's a lot of flexibility on offense now is basically what I'm saying with the custom stem system, which is really going to uh, counteract to the, um, the actual – uh, zone drop depths and I actually think it makes the zone drop depths a little less useful because I think that just leaving your actual um, you know leaving your flats to to match on their own is going to be a little bit better but overall as far as defense is concerned with them removing the ability to um, to base align defense now you just have the ability to show cover two show cover three or back off it's actually it sounded really cool when, when they were talking about in college 25 you have the ability to show fake coverages and then they would rotate the real coverages 
but losing but adding that really made you lose something that I thought was more important which came to like base aligning and stuff like that it's a little bit easier to understand I mean I like how they set it up but they need to expand on it you need to have more customization options when it comes to pre-snap defense because right now all you really have is the ability to press and you don't really have the ability to um, to basically like back off those corners once you press aside from you know doing it manually which doesn't necessarily give you a lot of time to set up a defense so once again all the adjustment uh all the benefits really all the new improvements really feel like they're going towards offense and all defense really got in return was the switch stick uh and maybe some slightly improved coverages but for the most part it seems like it felt like we lost more on defense than we gained when it comes to uh, pre-snap adjustments which is not really a good thing it's not a thing that i'm necessarily a fan of i think they need to add more pre-snap defensive adjustments so you can create more um, you know, you can create uh, plays quicker on the fly when it comes to defense. But like I said, it is definitely more understandable. There's less hidden features. Uh, like certain coverages, you know, you like if I'm running cover four and I want to drop the safeties down, but leave the cornerbacks back, I have the baseline, show blitz, baseline. There's really nothing like that anymore. Um, so it, it's just more, it's easier to understand, it's easier to digest for new players. Uh, but I'm going to end the video there. I've already made a lot of videos about Madden 25 and NCAA or College Football 25. I keep calling NCAA because of the old games. But if you want to see more on those two topics, I'll have them popping up on the screen. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.